Thank you, Gary. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been involved in this project. Um, huge numbers of us, um, insofar as volunteering, people working on different aspects of the project. So thank you, everybody, who supported us to enable to bring to today together. Um, the, the aim of today really was about bringing together as many different people from as many different organisations to share um, the knowledge that hopefully you'll gain from today. So I'm hoping that everybody will take away something that they weren't aware of. Some of, some of you will be aware of more things than others, but hopefully everybody will take something away. Um, I've got the graveyard shift. This is the one you all go to sleep as well, I think. I think it's known as. So hopefully I'll keep you awake. Um, where do we start from? I, I took a, I, the charity was set up in 2007. Um, I'm just checking if it's going to go wrong. Here we go. Um, the, the chari we're, we're a registered charity, but we're completely independent. We are also obviously a company uh, limited by guarantee. We don't have any affiliation, although our trustees originally came from the Catholic Church initially, we are not affiliated with any religious organisation and we're also non-political. So we've had at the centre Lithuanian Church, we have on a Sunday morning the Catholic Church and on a Friday we turn into a Muslim prayer meeting. So we try to include everybody in every way we can. As I say, we were set up in 2007. I came into post in 2008. Now I took a three-year contract because I tend to get bored and after three years I've met all the challenges and it's time to move on. The fact I'm still here in my post would indicate that there's been lots of challenges um, and lots of challenges still to go. Um, how, do, how were we set up? We was identified by a need by the local um, parishioners and the Catholic Church. And where that came from was because a coachload of Polish workers came to Wisbeach. They were all dropped off at the BP garage in the centre of Wisbeach with no jobs and nowhere to go. So, and mostly no English. So um, their first reaction was to go to Catholic Church. And so they actually slept in our old church hall. So we had lots of people, 30, 30 something people in the church hall. So that's where initially the idea started from. We were, we were fortunate, we got funding from EDA to get the renovations done on the old building, which gives us the center that we have today. All our trustees are local, so all local people. And we try to be fully inclusive and include all members of the local community. So although we were set up initially to support migrant workers, support integration, I would say now probably the centre users are 50-50. So 50% 50 from migrant community, 50 from settled communities. We have a very small team, um, staff, volunteers. We've probably got around about 140 volunteers who dip in and out for different uh, projects but we are reflective of the local community. So some of my staff are here today, Latvian, uh, Lithuanian, Bulgarian. So we also have Polish, Romanian. So we have the languages, the language skills, which is why we engage with the different local communities. Um, Gary, you really have to start waving at me when it's time because I always run over, so I'm going as quickly as I can. Um, we, we, we identify where we come from is we identify local needs. So where that could be through a focus group or it could be through information, advice and guidance. So we might find that 20 of the people that came this week were all Bulgarian. So we would then look to recruit for Bulgarian uh, translators or maybe staff, depending on um, what, what we've got available. Um, it might be that we have, we've had lots of older people coming in who are socially isolated, because as, as you've heard, transport-wise, we're, we're, we're not so well off as other places. So we have a friendship group. So we basically identify the need, then my job, my key job, if you like, would be to identify and secure funding we need to know our communities, and I think because we have such a diverse um, staff, volunteers, we actually have 
better than average, I would say, cultural awareness. And I think having cultural awareness of the different groups you're working with is key to, to engagement. Um, staff and volunteers, we're fully inclusive. We also, another, another option we offer is um, supported volunteering. So at lunch times, we make up to 30 sandwiches for the homeless or for people who on a zero hour contract this week may have to make a decision. Do I pay my rent or do I buy food? I would rather they pay, paid their rent. That way we can do some preventative. So we would provide at lunchtime, we don't means test, we don't ask are you in receipt of benefits. If you need food, you come in and we give you food. We also have collections. We, my, my community transport drivers go out, they collect from Aldi, Tesco's and Asda as well as smaller um, producers, suppliers. And that food is brought into the centre, and again, it's open distribution. So whoever needs it can come in. Now, some weeks we get 16 boxes of bananas, so that's quite difficult. <laughs> Other weeks we get a real good mixture of different foods. So um, all positive. One of the other things we do, and I think we do very well, is we have targeted social media. And I think through the morning, you, you, you're all coming to realise how important social media is as, as a channel to get information out and to get it targeted to the groups that you want to. I think in, in, my, in my experience, we're quite slow using social media. Um, you know, a lot of the people that come in for IT lessons are older people who wouldn't know what Facebook is, wouldn't know what Snapchat is, what have you. But if you're from a migrant community and you're working in another country, the way you need to stay in touch with your family and your friends is through social media. So that's much more entrenched. So I think that is definitely an area that we need to be looking at using in a, in a more positive way in, in whatever guise you're here today. Um, we've got, we know for instance within Wisbeach there are specific groups who we have Bulgarian whiz beach groups, Facebook groups, we have Romanian Facebook groups, Lithuanian, Latvian. So, but if you don't know or you don't have entry, how will you know that? But we do. So um, anybody who does want more information on that, we'll happily share it. Um, community challenges. Now, you know, we have got lots of community challenges and I'm going to quickly run through them, but I do want to say firstly, I live in a village just outside whiz beach. I've been there 13 years, it's a nice place. It's not, yes, it has challenges. It's a lovely rural area. I go out, I don't feel threatened in any way. I like to hear all of the different languages, um, but that's me. So, you know, <laughs> that, that's how it is. So if we're looking at, okay, what are our challenges in, in Finland, um, with speech? High levels of deprivation with wards in the bottom 10%, most deprived. Low levels of educational attainment, aspirations and skills. Lowest levels of healthy eating and exercise. And the highest levels of smoking. We have poor public transport and infrastructure. I think somebody mentioned earlier on, 30 miles to Cambridge. If you go by car, that will take you minimum of one hour. And that's just to get on the outskirts of Cambridge. Um, direct transport, two buses a day. Now, if you need to make a national, if you need to apply for a national insurance number, um, and you can't get Kings Lynn, you're going to be stuck in Cambridge all day because, or you're not even going to get there in time. So we do have poor, poor transport, and that's something that I know um, Stephen Barclay is particularly keen at um, addressing. Now, these may be slightly out of date, these figures, but at the last I looked, was 21.2% of children in Wisbech living in poverty. 26.8% of adults are actually fall within the obesity. Um, and then foremost, and why we're all here today, we've had a substantial high level of migration into a district that just did, didn't have the infrastructure in place to cope with it. Um, what are the barriers to people accessing services or you know, maybe coming forward as a victim of um, modern day slavery? Firstly, most of the people that we see don't see themselves as victims. How do you know what's normal if you don't know what to expect? So a lot of people don't see themselves as victims, and I think that's the sad, saddest part of it. 
Um, poor English language skills. Seasonal work, zero hour contracts, a lot of employment agency, shift work, lack of transportation, low income, bear in mind this is factory field work, it's all at the bottom end of scale for income. And within the settled communities, poor literacy skills, um, and consequently all of those things result in a lack of community cohesion. Um, so our, one of our roles I see is around integration of people coming into the area and positive, trying to positively promote community cohesion. So I'm going to very quickly run through our projects, but I want you to see that the two projects we've brought together today are just two of the things that we do. And if you look at how small our team is, you'll, you'll see how, how sort of all our things link up and have to link up. So information, advice and guidance. We've been very lucky that the lottery has supported us with this. It underpins everything we do. So everything that comes out of information, really comes out of information, advice and guidance. Two minibuses, we have a community transport scheme, takes young carers to pick them up from the villages, brings them into meetings. Uh, site club, we take people out for trips and we try to get people to, from different nationalities, to go and in somewhere English heritage or national trust. So a little bit of cultural coming in there. We've got outreach in Ely, uh, Whittlesea, March, and are you waving your paper? I'm about to. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> um, workshop, community cafe. We also have pop-up legal clinics. Um, we've got a migrant, this is of the two, modern day slavery, migrant statistical data, English language and community translators, community fair share project and a promoting independence project, well is in the woods, football for young ad uh, migrant adult workers, giving them something positive, arthritis group, family day, baby massage, homeless lunch clubs, friendship groups and a project called First Steps. Those are just our projects. We also have a lot of other people coming in and delivering their projects from the centre. So who do we work with? All of those people up there. Case studies, um, lots and lots of case studies. People come over the last few years, people coming in with their thumb hanging off where they've had no induction, they're out cutting leaks in the field. You ask, where, you know, who are you working for? It's an illegal gang master, and they only know it's three fields from the roundabout at Chatteris. That's it. Um, people being sent out delivering uh, bags door to door. You know, you get the bags outside your house to fill up with clothes. So we've had people go out on that, and then they've been sleeping on mattresses, moved over to Northampton. And this is back to where borders, crossing borders. Um, a lot of the things we see, people are being shipped over to Northampton or to other areas. Um, safeguarding issues, HMOs, if you've got a young child in there, um, we've heard about that. That's another area that we were involved in. So our two projects that you're here for today, we were very lucky. Gary's done one report for us and been working with us. Margaret and her team, another report. And Jake, who's up there with our documentary. So thank you, you guys, because that's been you know, the, the basis of this. Um, we, migrants, well, I can just very quickly, why did we take these two projects and why, why were we fortunate that Fenland agreed that we, you know, to, to, to work with us on it or allow us to work with them? We know statistical data is not correct. Um, we also know that as, as a coalface organisation, it's really important that we get that statistical data correct because I went to a school two weeks ago. The headmistress has got somebody for Lithuanian speaking, Russian speaking, that's all she needed. And I asked her, well, how about Romanian? We don't need. And I said, well, I just filled, we filled in six place intern placements last week. <laughs> She was like, oh no, what the heck? So that's, that's another thing we can do. We identify trends really quickly. Uh, migrant workers statistical data, again, there's lots of, you know, preparing the reports. That's what we've done. Um, modern day slavery. One of the things I think we really, that has come out of this in my head, really, and I'll be really quick, Gary, um, is the training element. Now, I ran a, a test one over at Ely before Gary came on board and delivered his training. The two things that came out, most of the people in that room didn't know they were first responders, which is not good. 
And secondly, even when they saw that there was an issue, they didn't know what their internal reporting system was. And that's very sad because that will mean that even though people are identifying, they're not reporting. And that might be one of the reasons why that's not coming forward. So I think, for me, one thing that we really, really need to take forward, and that is that we need to be looking at continuing to train people to be aware and identify. So not just the people who are sitting at this level within an organisation, but the people that are actually going in, the Tesco drivers that are delivering, the, the carer that's going into a home, your next door neighbour. And I think the more we can get that out there, the, the, the better I will feel that we've, we've done with this project. So I'm going to love you and leave you now, Gary, because I know you're about to throw me off stage, and just to say thank you very much. And once again, thanks to all my team, all the people that have worked with us, please. Uh, local Fenland District Council, Rachel from ILGA. So, yeah, thank you all. <laughs>